YouTube, welcome back. This is the last installment of my 2023 tier list. If you guys wanna get in on the fun, make sure you check the link below. You can get the list and you can go ahead and throw all these games into what you feel they should be in. If you are enjoying this, make sure you comment, like, subscribe. Make sure you come join us over at Twitch. Make sure you join the Discord as well so you know when I'm gonna go live so you can at least, you know, argue with me maybe about whether or not some of these games should have been where they're at. Whatever the case, enjoy the final installment of this tier list. Thank you guys again for checking all this out. I will be back soon with more game reviews. Enjoy. Super Meat Boy. Platforming legend. Absolutely great game. I bolted through this one. I was doing so well on this. I played it one stream during a streamathon. And I, I, I had a great time with it. I thought Super Meat Boy was excellent. I don't know how the hell I slept on it this long. I wish I'd played a little bit more or had a little bit more of a draw. I'd probably still play it on my Twitch channel. But if you're looking for a platforming difficulty that is completely ridiculous with a lot of hilarious moments, Super Meat Boy will be your huckleberry. And uh, yeah, you're going to have a great time. <laughs> Swarm the City. Oh my god. This is a this is an RTS game where you're you're the the Lord of the Dead and you're trying to get all your zombies up and you're just trying to blow up every city that you possibly can. Th this game was very deep. <laughs> like it was I tried to play it. It got really samey really fast. There was some cool stuff going on, but for the most part, guys, it just it wasn't really that good. I don't even know how else to put it. You're you're just you're trying to rule the world and turn everyone into zombies, but it didn't really do much outside of the first 30 minutes. After the first 30 minutes, I was like, I know exactly what I'm getting from this game. And while it's not a complete piece of shit, it definitely wasn't good. So yeah, Swarm the City's a D, guys. It, you know, RTS, zombies, sure, awesome, great. But yeah, no, no, I'm good. Now, The Last Faith. Now, this is a game that I really enjoyed. This is a game that was a Metroidvania and Dark Souls-like all wrapped into one, and it was a lot of fun. I can't really say too much about it outside of some really cool boss battles, some really cool weapons, uh, the weapon upgrade system, the weapon, like, you know, uh, uh, skill system. Skill system, is that what I'm gonna put? Like, the damage system is very a la Dark Souls. You know, like, strength, dexterity, blah, blah, blah. You get better stats are gonna make you better with this weapon. Um, it was neat. It was very visually appealing. And it was a game I wish I would have played more, but I couldn't because for whatever reason, it kept crashing, which is why I'm going to give it a B. I'd probably make this an A game, but I was having problems playing it. I wanted to play through the entire thing. It was a lot of fun. If you, again, you like Metroidvanias and you like Dark Souls, this game is great. It's very similar to Blasphemous. You know, Blasphemous 2 is uh, very similar, like very similar pixel graphics, same kind of feel when it came to the, uh, you know, like the Metroidvania. Obviously, the, the combat's a little bit different because Last Faith is more Dark Souls, but I had a great time with it, and I would make it an A game if I had actually kept playing it. Uh, if you're into those style of games, check out The Last Faith. This one was absolutely rewarding. It currently has a very positive on Steam, and I feel like it needs a little bit more love. Again, I just wish I could have finished it, but God damn it, if it didn't want to work on my computer. The Last Spell. More tactics goodness. This game is awesome. The Last Spell is one that you should play if you like strategy games. It has a lot of cool things going on. It has a lot of different weapons. You're in the middle of a city. You're trying to defend the city. You're trying to cast the Last Spell because you're trying to get rid of all the evil in the world. But essentially, when you distill this one down, it is a tactical strategy game that is absolutely well done. And I feel like if you enjoy those kinds of games, you're going to have a great time with this one. The Last Spell kind of brings back the same kind of old, I don't know, maybe I don't want to say Shining Force because that isn't necessarily right. Let me go ahead and look up the Last Spell here really fast, guys. A few moments later. You know what? Some of the games that are on here, I, I've never even actually, I, I just, no, what, what, it, Jagged Alliance 3? If you guys know what Jagged Alliance 3 is, uh, Tactics Ogre Reborn it's compared to, which is pretty high praise on that one. Um, whatever the case is there with that one, guys, the last spell is, again, if you like tactical strategy games, this game is an excellent game. I would have played this a lot more on my live stream, again, if it had a little bit more of a following on Twitch, but it didn't. So I always got to do what's right for me and my career. And unfortunately, playing that game more on my stream wasn't it. So, but if you enjoy those kind of games, get after it, guys. You're going to have a great time. Oh boy, Tiny Rogues. I enjoyed this game before. This is an S tier game right now. The developer is somebody that I love to death. They hang out in my live stream a lot. Tiny Rogues is basically what you get if you take the Binding of Isaac, enter the Gungeon a little bit with some kind of RPG element like stat leveling and like alignment leveling now. Uh, just had a big update called the Heaven and Hell update. This is one that you deserve to play. It is currently $10 on Steam. It has an overwhelming positive, if I'm not mistaken, review right now. Uh, 
and it's awesome and it has a really bright future and I will probably be playing it more on my live stream as time goes by. I am probably going to end up putting a review on this lovely website sooner than later as well. Oh yeah, all reviews, overwhelmingly positive. You love to see that guys. <laughs> <clears throat> but the game is fantastic and you should definitely check it out. It's got a lot of fun references in it to even some other video games, some other genres. Uh, I have an item in it. If you ever find the old man's walking stick, I got you. That's me. Ruby loves me. I don't know why. You're going to have a great time with Tiny Rogues. This is an S tier game and it's $10. You are not going to spend a better $10 on a video game if that's all you can afford. I promise you that. It's a bullet hell. So if you don't like bullet hells, you're not going to like it. But if you're okay with a bullet hell, you're going to be fine. It has varying degrees of difficulty that you can control. It is very beatable on your very first run right from the jump. And then you just start getting into unlocking everything. I cannot suggest this game enough. Expect a review over Tiny Rogues over the next six months anyway, depending on how quickly the developer gets this game finished. Go play this game. Tormented Souls. Tormented Souls is an old school style Resident Evil horror game that was very average because that's exactly what it was. It was it was Resident Evil with a different coat of paint. That, that's all it was. I enjoyed the one day that I played it. This was a game I had crashing issues with as well, unfortunately, because I'm pretty sure it was a port. I could be wrong. Uh, Tormented Souls, very average. I played it for horror month. It was uh, good enough. It's got uh, some very interesting, like screwed up shit going on in it. You know, the horror elements are definitely there, but you know, it's 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 rank and file standard Resident Evil style of gameplay, tank controls, blah 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 blah. So, yeah, I mean, it it wasn't awful, but again, it wasn't really that good either. Uh, if, you know, you enjoy old Resident Evil style gameplay, yeah, sure, go check it out. Tower Escape. Now, Tower Escape is a game that I wasn't expecting to play this year either. Uh, you're, it's basically tower defense, but reversed. You know, you got the tower defense, you line up all your shit, you're trying to kill all the things in waves as they make their way through. This is the exact opposite of that. You're the waves, and you're trying to avoid the towers, and you're trying to get stuff and make your way out of this. You're a necromancer trying to break out of it. Um, different, like, factions to use, which were really cool. Uh, challenge modes. Uh, very fun game and very cheap. This is a very good game. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to B list that one. If you enjoy a fun little twist on tower defense, please go play this one. The developers are very cool. They put together a really good product. They're still actively working on the game. It's very, very neat. And it is just, it's a really good time. And I think that if you enjoy tower defense style of games, this is going to be one that's really going to speak to you. And I think you're going to get a lot of gameplay out of it. Oh, look, another tower defense game, Tower Tactics Liberation, except this one has deck building aspects. This is not a reverse tower defense like Tower Escape. You do not play as the waves of enemies. You are definitely trying to blow them up. Uh, also a good game. I'm going to throw this one in there. I Again, deck builders aren't really my steez all the time, but this is one that I genuinely enjoy. Uh, I will go back to on my own time occasionally and play it. It's got a lot of unlocks. It's got the same kind of like, you know, system uh, like Slay the Spire, where as you go up in difficulties, like you beat one difficulty, another difficulty opens up, adding a different challenge modifier. But perfectly well done game. Uh, a lot of different, you know, towers to use, a lot of different approaches to it. I didn't unlock all the things or anything. But again, if you enjoy a tower defense game, this is one that I would suggest, and it will offer you a pretty damn good time. <clears throat> Turn up boy commits tax evasion. This is a meme game. This is a very average meme game. It does have some funny parts. It does have a replayable now roguelite mode as well, because that's all the rage these days. Everyone needs a roguelite mode. You got to have some replayability to your games. I played through this one just for the story, and it is just as ridiculous as the name implies. If you have it free on Game Pass, play it. I wouldn't spend money on it, but an average game, good for a few laughs and a few funny moments, and one that, you know, you can, you can actually finish this game in about two or three hours. So it's not like you're gonna spend a whole lot of time. But if you feel like a, a meme game time, this one's gonna be for you. Val Forest. this is one that I wasn't expecting either. This one is very old school arcadey, very Contra-like. If you guys are familiar with the old Contra games, just came out with a recent sequel that harkened more of our type for all of you older, like, you know, game lovers. But Valfaris is very much a Contra style of game with a, uh, you know, you find new weapons, you can upgrade the weapons. It's got a really paper thin story. It's got a lot of gore, a lot of viscera. Uh, very, very good time. I played this during my streamathon as well. I'm going to put it in the good category. Am I ever going to play it again? Probably not. I, maybe on a lark, I'll play it one more time because I got through it in like two streams or something like that. Maybe like, you know, three hours of hop. 
but very entertaining game. It has an excellent soundtrack. If you like watching a bunch of gore, it's very fun. There were definitely some really fun moments for me in this game where I was thinking I was actually killing someone uh, or a boss rather. And unfortunately that boss still had kind of a death knell, right? Like they're in the middle of dying, but suddenly they're like shooting out shit that can actually hit you and kill you. And I'm over here celebrating and suddenly I'm taking one right between the eyes and I'm going to have to fight this guy again. So yeah, if you if you enjoy that kind of gameplay, Valfaris is definitely fun. And I think that uh, you'd enjoy it, especially if you're a fan of the Contra games. Wall World is one that's gonna be hard for me to explain. So I'm gonna make it like this, it's a D game. The only reason I say this is that this is another one of those meta progression games where it's expecting you to only get so far every time and then you're gonna spend some of the currency in between runs so you can get a little bit further next time. But the problem is, is it gets really goddamn frustrating really fast. This is a game that uh, it, it knows what it's doing and it, it is fun. Like you're gonna enjoy the first few runs, but then you're gonna get to this point where it feels like everything is so glacial that you're like, oh my God, can you please just let me progress in the fucking game because it's driving me nuts. That is Wall World. Yeah, that's Wall World. You're a set, okay, so like, I'll tell you about the game instead of my pissing. You're this thing on the side, it's literally a wall. You're on a wall, and then you dig into the wall to find all your like progress shit, to upgrade your, your thing that's crawling on the wall. You can go up or you can go down, and there's different biomes and stuff like that, but as you go up and down, there are things trying to kill you, and then occasionally a boss will show up. You're also on a 30 minute timer. That's where the frustration lies. You're like trying to make all this progress, but if you've gone too far into the wall at one point in time, you haven't made enough meta progress to get up further, then the big boss shows up at 30 minutes and kills you and you, you're you back to square one. You're doing it all over again. That repetition, some people are gonna really jive with. It drove me fucking bonkers. I wanted to get a little bit more progress done each time, but it always felt like I was getting hamstrung. Uh, poor game. It could have been so much better than it was, but I still think some people are gonna have some enjoyment, but goddamn if it didn't drive me crazy. Warhammer 40k Bullgun. As somebody who's just recently, over the last couple of years, gotten into Warhammer lore, this was a really good time. Uh, it's, it's very fun. You know, it's old school Doom, it's old school Wolfenstein, shit like that. Uh, the problem is it gets really goddamn samey really fast. Uh, average game. I'm not gonna, I mean, it's not a terrible game. It's Warhammer. If you like Warhammer, you're probably gonna have a great time with it. You know, you're gonna be smoking a bunch of, you know, demons of Zinch. Uh, you're gonna be running around and finding a bunch of the old uh, standbys like flamers and, you know, heavy bolt guns and stuff like that. But as far as a, you know, like this game's gonna really, really hold your attention. I personally felt like it was very average because, you know, like the old Wolfenstein Doom games, it's pretty samey as time goes on. So unless you're really invested in the property, it might lose its luster pretty quick. From the gate, it's great. You know, it's like, oh, wow, this is a fun little throwback, stuff like that. But it definitely wears over time and you're just going to start seeing a lot of the same crap and you might just get as disinterested as I did. Wizard with a gun. Now, this was a fun game. This is a good game. Uh, this game didn't have much staying power on my Twitch stream either. But if you enjoy a good twin stick shooter, and, uh, you know, some progression that has a very, it, it felt very don't starve together in a lot of ways. Uh, you can also co-op this game. Playing with other people is actually recommended anyway, because everyone has a different style of gun that does different things. And you're going to usually want to combine those things for, uh, you know, better effect as you make your way through the game. But it has like a world hub, you know, you make it through different parts of the world. And then you're going back to one central location where you're building out a base and you do all your upgrades. It's it's a very good game, very serviceable, pretty unique in some ways, but also very samey. Like I said, you're thinking Don't Starve and a lot of other twin stick shooters that are out there. So Wizard with a Gun is one that also came out, if I'm not mistaken, from uh, publisher Devolver Digital. I can recommend it if you enjoy those kind of games, like I said, like Don't Starve, because that's where you're going to get the most feel from. Uh, it's fun. It's fun game, but also could get a little bit repetitive. You might enjoy the repetition. I enjoyed it for the most part. Other people are going to be like, man, this is just, this is tedious. So, you know, see the aforementioned bolt gun. Like you get to the point where like, all right, it's so samey. It's just kind of eh, whatever. But other people are going to latch onto that with a death grip and have a good time. So yeah, I, I enjoyed Wizard with a Gun. I'm glad I played it. World of Warships. F. Gotcha game. That's all you need to know, right? Gotcha game. Some of the gameplay is fun. But you're paying to win, you know, just like everybody else, you know, World of Warship, World of Tanks, Rage Shadow Legends. I don't know. You go down the goddamn list. If you're spending the money, you're going to have a way better time because you're going to get a leg up. And that's what it's all about, right? Because you're always playing against other people. If you can't beat the other people, you're not going to make any progress. You don't make any progress. You're not going to get better shit. Oh, you can't get better shit. Let's go ahead and give us some money. You know what I'm talking about. F. XCOM 2. S tier game. Love this game. 
especially with War of the Chosen DLC. Can't say enough good things about it. I'm always looking for another game that's like this. I'm currently playing Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate again because I can finally play that game again. I used to not be able to play that game on my computer because it would kill my power supply and my graphics card because it's so intensive. XCOM 2 never treated me like that. The good, consistent lover with a soft, gentle touch when you're not missing a 99% shotgun blast to the head. XCOM 2, absolutely fantastic. If you've never played the tactical strategy phenomenon that it is, you should definitely check it out. Make sure you get War of the Chosen. It adds so much more cool shit. I loved playing this game again after a couple year layoff during my streamathon. I'm glad I went back to it. I had a really good time. So yeah, go play XCOM 2. It's fun. You'll you'll thank you. You'll thank me. You, I know you're gonna fucking thank me for playing this game if you've never played it before. If you like tactical strategy, if you like a ball busting time, if you enjoy missing 99% shots. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. Those are those are like most of the games that I played. Over this last year, 2023 is in the books. I'm, I'm three days out. I'm recording this on the 28th of December. I don't know when you're going to see this video. But this was one that I really enjoyed doing. I enjoyed going back and, you know, taking stock of all the different games that I get to play as a live streamer on Twitch. If you enjoyed this YouTube video, make sure you like it. Again, give me your comments. Argue with me. I don't care. Whatever the fuck you want to do. It doesn't... I, I literally could care less. I just want to talk with you guys about video games. Because video games are fun. Video games are something that we can all enjoy together, even if we don't agree on whether or not they're good or bad. So yeah, come on, dicks. Bring your best. Let's see what you got. These were my best games. Even though that some of these are old as dirt, like XCOM, this game's old as shit. This is new. Returnal's fairly new. This game's old as dirt. It's just a new, like, coat of paint. This game's a few years old. Darkest Dungeon's old as shit. All these other ones, though, yeah, these are really good games. And as far as the other ones, eh, well, who knows? I know I played some other shit during the year, but you know what? These were the ones that had probably the most impact and the ones that I felt most strongly about. So let me know what you think, guys. Make sure you guys hit the Discord. Make sure you guys come over to the Twitch channel. Make sure you guys like and subscribe this. Give me some action on those comments. Get me in that algorithm. Give me the goodwill back of my Baldur's Gate 3 video. You guys should really go watch it. People love my Baldur's Gate video. That game's great. And you guys will probably like that review. Anyway, I love you guys. I appreciate you. And until the next time, the old man's out. I'll talk to you soon, everybody.